Hello everyone, welcome to this screencast presentation taking a look at what is new in Twinmotion 2019. My name is Mitchell Parsonage, I'm an application engineer uh, for Modern Design Centers in Cape Town. In this video I just want to run through some of the new features of the software. So I'm not going to focus too much on modeling techniques or anything like that. Uh, focusing more on just kind of what's new in this release, how it compares to some of the other earlier releases. Um, it has been available for roughly a week now. I've been playing around with it for the last couple of days, creating a scene. So the demonstration I'm going to show you is based off of a scene that I've created and just some of the things that I have picked up as I've been working with the software. Uh, if you go to Twinmotion's website, they have a free 20-day trial that you can download and run, which is what I'm doing at the moment. So starting off here, the very first thing that they've done and implemented is this product manager, uh, which I very much like. Uh, if you go to their website and download it, you'll download the product manager, 30 or 40 meg download roughly. And within the product manager is where you download and install the actual Twinmotion application itself, as well as any relevant plugins that you require. So as you can see, I've got the Revit add-in installed as well. Uh, this is a really nice feature. This was in Twinmotion 2018, so it's by no means new, but it's still very, very much worth mentioning, is that you've got a dynamic link between Revit application and Twinmotion. So you don't have to export FBX file from Revit and import it into Twinmotion. You can just click a button and send your model directly from Revit to Twinmotion. Any changes you want to make to your Revit model, you can adjust in Revit. You can click an update button and it will update in Twinmotion as well. So no longer having to export and import things regularly and start again basically is quite a time saver and something that I very much enjoy. Um, I like this product manager. I think that they've just condensed everything into one space. All your updates and downloads are in the screen over here. So really, really nice feature that they have here. Okay, so jumping into Twinmotion itself, uh, this is the scene that I have created at the moment. Um, as mentioned, not going to go over too many modeling techniques and things like that, uh, but just briefly to introduce you to kind of what's happening over here. We've got trees that we can just paint into the landscape, just like Twinmotion 2018 and all the previous releases as well. Reflections here while it's raining. Uh, have been in my opinion increased quite nicely in terms of quality I really like the effects that are generated here now uh, this weather accurately depicts what's happening in Cape Town at the moment <laughs> and if we have a little bit of a closer look over here particle effects are really really nice okay so this row that I have here was grabbed using the context tool uh, which is an amazing feature in Twinmotion you can basically grab a region from anywhere in the world and you can pull it into Twinmotion and it will identify roads, some trees, as well as any existing buildings in the area. And it will actually pull that into Twinmotion as context, which is really, really nice to have. Okay, so I'm just going to fly through here to the actual building uh, itself. So everything that you see here has been modeled uh, in Twinmotion so far, as well as an airplane flight path and things like that. So this is what I've really, really enjoyed about Twinmotion is the landscape capabilities that you have. You have terrain editing and modeling, um, which is really, really powerful in my opinion. And that's one of the things that I enjoy most about this application. So just to give you a quick rundown of what we've got here, we've got this house that has been modeled inside of Revit. And that is the only thing that was modeled inside of Revit. Everything else that you see here is modeled in Twinmotion itself. So again, that's why I say for landscape design, I think it's really, really great and powerful because you can actually model the terrain. So I briefly modeled the terrain in Revit just to get correct uh, lie of the land and I imported that into Twinmotion and then I just raised the landscape up to match more or less the surface of the Revit topography that I have in here. So modeling terrain, very, very simple. Click on it, can click sculpt and I can raise it up. I can depress it. Just a couple clicks of buttons really. Very, very easy, intuitive. The whole application, I think, is very user-friendly and easy to use. Don't have to have much experience with a visualization software or even 3D modeling applications to use this. A lot of it is drag and drop. Very, very simple interface. Very nice, easy to use. Okay, so getting on to one of the first changes they've made, which is just to do with the library itself. 
and the content that they've got in here. They have made uh, quite a few additions to the overall library, which is really, really nice. First of which is the decals section. So if I go into furnitures and I go into decals, they've added in over 100 new items here. So we've got road signs and symbols. We have got manhole covers and sewers. We've got graffiti items over here. We have got puddles and we've got asphalt stains. Uh, sorry, asphalt patches. Just, you know, little items to bump up the realism of your scenes that much more. And we've got some dead leaves and shadows here, etc. So just really nice additions to this overall section over here. In addition to that, if we go into the city folder, we've got a construction pack that they have implemented here as well with some nice items that are available. And if we go over to the characters section, they have also implemented some construction people over here as well. Obviously, Twin Motion, remember everything is dynamic and actually live. So all these people are animated as you place them down, they move. You know, if I have a look at the trees, for instance, the leaves are in motion. Everything in Twin Motion is basically in motion. It's kind of where I presume the name comes from. Okay, keeping with the library, a couple more things that they have implemented here. So if I go. Uh, back to furniture, back to city, and I come down here to the flag section. They have done extensive upgrades to the amount of flags you have available to you. So if I drag and drop a flag post and I just place it anywhere, I can change this flag to basically be whatever country I want in the world. So if I come down here to the texture section, I click on it and I just click open, it would have already been pathed correctly on your computer. I can type in South Africa where I'm located and I can just say open and my flag will change to that option. I can update the reflection. And I can also change the wind speed and direction of that flag as well. So again, just another nice addition to the overall library, something that's great to have. In terms of interior, they have also given us a decoration section over here where we've got some images, photographs, wall mounted items, carpets, photo frames, things like that, cushions, books, just more items to upgrade the realism of your overall scenes. In terms of reflections, a uh, very, very, very interesting situation that happens over here. So if I go to a window, for instance, and I look into the window, I can see that I've got a rough reflection over here, but it doesn't really depict anything that's behind me. It doesn't show me any detail like it. This is something called screen space reflection. So if I start to move over to the side over here and I start to look at items in my viewport, I will see that those items start to display in the reflection. So if I can see the item in the viewport, it will display in the reflection. Okay, so to overcome that though, they have given us an item that we can use in our material library if we permanently want that reflection to be there. If I go to volumes, and I go to reflection probes, and I drop one of these in, okay, I can make a couple of adjustments to the size, um, the location, etc. And now it doesn't matter where I actually move to, I will see the correct reflection there in the background at all times. I don't have to see that item at the same time to make the reflection show. Okay, so we can place this obviously in a number of different locations wherever it is that we would like to. Okay, moving on to a couple of viewing options. These are really, really great as well. If I come over here to this eye in the top right hand corner, and I just go to this little house over here, which is my views icon, I can now toggle between a variety of different views on the fly, which is much easier than orientating to it myself. So I can just go to a top view. I can go to a front, I can go to any of the side views, and I can also create custom views as well, where I position my camera where I want it to be and create a view out of that. And if I go to a top view again quickly, they have also implemented clipping as well, depth clipping, which is really, really nice. So I can see my entire structure or I can cut through my roof, for instance, and actually have a look at the interior of my model, which is something that's really, really great. And that wasn't possible in earlier releases of Twin Motion. Okay, I'm just going to jump back to a perspective view and I'm going to go take a look at some of the nighttime 
uh, changes that they've made. So if I just go over to my image that I've created earlier, click on it. First of all, you'll notice that it starts off very dark. The longer I leave it, the clearer it gets. The global illumination just takes a little bit of time. Okay, and in this regard, um, when we're looking at the nighttime features, they have implemented a couple of things. So if I go to the more item over here and I go into lighting, they've given us moon power now, where we can you know, dictate how much brightness falls on the landscape coming from the moon. In addition to that, we can go even further into the settings and we can change the phase of the moon. And we can also change the star's intensities as well from nothing to very bright just by changing a couple of sliders. And we can change quite a few things about this um, environment over here. Back to lighting, we've also got ambient occlusions, which helps the shadows out quite a lot. And we've got shadows as well that we can adjust. We can also adjust the global illumination. We can adjust the color temperature as well as the ambient lighting. Okay, so we can get some really, really realistic and interesting effects um, out of Twin Motion, which is another reason why I really enjoy the software quite a bit. Uh, the localization tool now generates a compass, uh, which is really great as well. So if I just go to localization, I've got a compass over here where I can actually orient myself north. And I can see it just a little bit more easily so I can dictate where north is actually sitting. Previously, I didn't have this compass. So it was a little bit difficult a little bit difficult to actually set that so they've just made that slightly easier um, under your urban dock over here you've got two new settings available to us as well so if I just head back over to my house first one is camera align so if I want to align myself to the face of this roof structure over here for instance I can select camera align Select the camera line tool and just click on the surface and twin motion will align me to that surface. If I want to click on the ground plane, I can do the same thing and will take me to a top down view and whatever surface I want to align myself to, I can simply just select it. Whereas previously I would have to kind of orient myself there uh, manually. So small feature, but definitely quite helpful. And then we've also got the measure tool as well. So we can place dimensions in twin motion now. So if I go into this little room here very quickly, and I click on my measure tool and I just place down a dimension that's actually a physical item now in twin motion so it'll stay there even when I deselect it I can select it and I've got a couple of features that I can adjust like the text position as well as the size or the scale of that item and if I want to create a diagonal um, measurement you see for instance if I try and move it here it moves the whole item but it keeps it horizontal if I want to actually make that a diagonal measurement I can turn the constraint off and now I can move just one side of the dimension while the other one stays in place getting a diagonal distance okay, so I'm just going to delete that out but another new feature that they have uh, implemented there so one of the most requested features was the perspective correction uh, that they have created so if I go and create an image if I go to my more section over here and I go to my camera settings we've got perspective correction that's available now so this was the most requested feature in early releases of twin motion they have finally implemented it and is available now In terms of the VR interface, they have done quite a few upgrades to that, which is really, really amazing. Much more immersive and interactive. While you're in VR, you can adjust things like the time of day and the cloud cover. You can adjust phases. You can even change materials, uh, which is really great. Obviously, I can't display that to you here, but it's it's quite amazing to work with that. Uh, they've also implemented point of view save so for instance if i save my twin motion project right now and i close it down the next time i open it it'll open to this view very very small feature but that wasn't actually there previously um, in terms of paths if you want to create 
a path for a person to work, walk along, for instance. You can loop paths as well. So if I click here to make my first point and I just go all the way around, what I want to do is the last point that I actually create, I want to snap that to my first point. And that will ensure that that person is just going to continually walk around that path without disappearing and respawning. Um, if you've worked with Twinocean before, you'll see that that is something that is quite frustrating at times is that the person gets to the end of the path and they'll just disappear and start at the beginning of the path again. So if you use this method, you can actually loop things around. Okay, just a couple of things that I noticed as well. I'm not sure if they were in previous releases of Twinmotion. I didn't do too much work on Twinmotion 2018, so I'm not sure if these things were available previously. But if I place something down, so I'll place something quite big. Let's just use a crane, for instance. Okay, if I hover or drag and drop, I can just place that item down. But if I click on this little yellow node at the center and I start to move over faces, that item actually snaps to faces now. I'm not sure if Twinmotion did this previously. It, I've never had this feature available to me. So I think it is something new that they've implemented. Might have been in 2018, I'm not sure. You can still obviously just move it around normally by just selecting the actual planes um, and moving them around that way. If you want to create many items at the same time, so for instance, if I go and just place down Let's just use a piece of furniture, a chair for instance. So I just drag and drop that into place and I want to create multiple items of that. I could copy and paste it and move that item across and I would have to do that over and over again. But Twinmotion has kind of an array tool similar to Revit. If I hold down shift and I drag and drop that item and I let it go, it'll give me the distance or the spacing that I'm using and how many items I want to create at that spacing. So basically exactly the same as the array tool in Revit and it will just create that many items that you've specified at that first placement distance that you have there as well. Okay, so that is pretty much all of the new features that they've implemented um, into Twinmotion 2019. If you have any other questions or if you want to know anything in a little bit more detail, you can just leave a comment below and I will respond to you as soon as possible. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think um, and I'll see you guys next time.